Hi, I'm Susanna Baker from The Art Experience, and The Art Experience is a company that really loves and is passionate about the arts in Miami. Uh, we have been, for five years, been taking people around and showing the wonderful arts and cultures, and through my journey, I have met an incredible artist named Edouard Duval Carrier. He is renowned, he's an author, he's an artist, he is a professor, um, just an amazing human being more than anything. And in our conversation with the recent disaster of Haiti with Hurricane Matthew, we all know that this little tiny country in the Caribbean has always beautiful, with beautiful people, beautiful landscapes, beautiful waters, but unfortunately, the disgrace of Mother Nature. And the devastation, but yet the Haitian people smile, and you never see them, even when all this disaster is around them, their personality and their joyfulness just re resonates. And that's what makes Haiti so special. We asked ourselves in the art experience, how can we create a dialogue? A dialogue that really resonates in our community and other companies and leaders of the community of Miami and our city's neighbors. So with this, Edward Duval Carrier and the Arts Haitian Cultural Arts Alliance has come together with a board member and the chairperson and Edward Duval Carrier himself to discuss our new campaign, a very important campaign called Smart Haitian Donations and how to educate the public on the right way of fundraising and giving back to Haiti. What are the right donations? What are the educated choices? And with that, I open up the panel to introduce you uh, to the Haitian Cultural Art Alliance uh, team with Edouard Duval Carrier as creative director, uh, artist, author. Welcome. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> anyways, thank you so well, much so for much. opening for opening this uh, a, I mean room for discussion uh, concerning you know like how to donate to Haiti. I mean, Haiti is prone to disaster. I mean, and this was this is one of the so many that we've had in the you know like in the, since since Haiti became independent. So you know like one ask one the first question one has to ask himself is why aren't there protocols in that nation to provide and to bring relief to really uh, affected uh, citizens in that nation? Well, the the. the, the the history of Haiti, its its past, its its uh, uh, social configuration, its political configuration, we have not we have not yet gotten to that point. So you know, like every time, the world is you know like called upon to assist and and do things in Haiti that I personally think could have been solved much easier if it was done you know like I mean, prematch prematurely and not expect you know like I mean uh, uh, immediate assistance after a disaster anyways what what brought me to you know like to, 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 to this discussion is the fact that I for some reason a truck showed up in front of my studio saying where do we drop the donations for Haiti and I said well I'm not aware that I'm supposed to be receiving you know like a, a assistance or relief aid for Haiti and uh, I made a few phone calls and figured out that it was another organization that was supposed to, but in the in, in just out of curiosity because it was a very large truck, I wanted to see what was in it. You understand that was being sent, and the the, I, the, 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 the driver he graciously opened the back door so I could see, and it was half filled with plastic bottles of water, and the other half was Chef Boyardi cans of of, of whatever they produce. I mean. A pasta with a bit of, of tomato paste. I mean, it, it was all lovely and very touching and very good. But, I mean, in my head, the first thing I thought is that we have water in Haiti. You understand? Why wasn't this water bought locally? Or there are the pasta, the pasta makers in Haiti and tomato paste makers in Haiti. You know, like they are big productions locally. Why weren't they, why weren't they asked to provide, you know, like, the, I mean, certain assistance to the to the victims. I mean, I don't know why it is that they were sending this thing, but it got me thinking that first of all, there are things that are being produced, and the deduction is that if they are being sent freely and graciously by very you know like concerned you know like American public, I mean maybe you know like I mean water was not the right choice. They could have given something that was of much more need down there. 
because you know like first of all you know like plastic bottles are a nuisance everywhere right now I mean they pollute I mean they, they, they don't disintegrate so you, when you have all of these bottles of water in one island you know it just where does it end up is in the, the, the ocean you know so forget it you know like that's right. that should not be they could have set a tank of water I would have been more pleased you understand right. but there is plenty of water in Haiti you understand and they, they could have assisted the local merchants or the local businesses that produce purified water you understand right. of course there's a lot of problems you know like in between like price gouging I mean this businessman but you know like there has to be you know like a, a better response to that right. you understand it has to be government wise locally right. and also but I mean I thought that maybe like if we did this particular discussion where you know like we could highlight you know, like certain people, you know, as a certain NGOs, I mean, like uh, aid organizations that are in Haiti to support the, their, their efforts that when right. they already have boots on the ground, you understand, it would be a much better idea than to just ask the public here and right. touch their, their, their sensibilities to be sending things that might be detrimental. Right. Either so, to the Haitian people, either to the environment or either to the economy right. of that nation. Right. So, so now my question to you is... Um, is to, to educate the public. And I think that that is where we're lacking. I think that when Americans or all different type of nationalities come together to help and assist a distressed country, there needs to be a protocol where to go. Because a lot of the fear is, am I donating correctly? Am I donating to a, uh, an organization that the, the donations will actually get to the hands of the people? Or will it stop at the, at the customs? Will it be a black market that will be formed? There's a lot of things and concerns. So I think that, like you said, Edouard, it was great to see a truck full of water, but it might have been better to see uh, a water cleaning machine. Absolutely. You know, a water cleaning machine Stations. so where an organization gets together and instead of donating 50 bucks each or something, maybe sending these water cleaning machines. Uh, medicine, I'm sure. Yes. I think a lot of people believe that because of the hurricane, they think of this massive, and the media. I think the media is at fault too because the media keeps showing uh, this uh, destruction, destruction, so people think that there aren't any more factories with food. There needs to be someone with the boots on, on, on the ground over there to also say, look, we have food, we have cans. So now I'm gonna go to Maria Chauncey Gonzalez, who's the chairwoman of the Haitian Cultural Arts Alliance. And Maria, I wanna ask you, what would you do to educate the public into where to donate and how to donate? Well, thank you. They are very pleased to be participated with you uh, about that. What, what I find, as Edouard was sharing, that we start discussing, uh, these emergency always occur, you know, because Haiti has been hit, hit uh, several times in different catastrophes. And uh, it seems that we are not learning. People come from uh, the different country and uh, they come to bring relief and they, they, they bring. Uh, you know, the Americans send water, they send food, and uh, you know, you have pictures taken, CNN is showing you that the relief. And after uh, a month, it, uh, people go, or three months, and uh, these people are back to zero. We have to start seeing here, uh, everybody, how could we change that whole thing in having the people a, a, a long-term uh, resolution to the problem of or this catastrophe. Able, make them able for sustenance. Okay, you know? so it has to be a sustainability. Right now, you know, the first emergency, people are hungry, da, da, da. you su su supply food, and but at the same time, there should be a, a phase two, that where you start doing some reconstruction to help them, and after that, give them some seed for them to start planting, and get them a little bit independent. And, uh, you know, these are the things that we have to, because otherwise, they will never survive. So, what I felt, it was good because everybody, you know, they don't know to whom they have to give their donation. People are skeptical, you know, about the, the different thing that is happening, you know, in different countries when you send money. So, uh, is to start working with organizations that are in Haiti, but that at the same time, they are registered in the United States and they have a 501c3 U.S. company 
here. So like this, the public will be so happy when they give a donation to that organization. Not only they get their tax with uh, uh, their tax uh, right off, right off from that organization, and at the same time they could see what they have done, and they could go to the CFS two, for the space three, and see how come they could get engaged and continue doing something, to, because they will see the result, you know, through their website or through email and things like this. Right. So. This is what is it. Otherwise, what is going to happen? Influx of people coming through the boat people because they can't stay anymore in Haiti. We need to avoid for them to stay there and get them a sense of dignity, responsibility, and learning st uh, 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 sp uh, skills. You know, right. and that's what needs to be done. And that's a very important, uh, yeah, education and the and a backup and and where companies can actually. Uh, adopt Haiti in the sense of helping and in, in, in farming and seeds and and giving the dignity and respect because it's not money that gives you that it's it's seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and a support system which and is work. so important and, and hard work, and work. work. hard and work. work now I want to bring the conversation uh, to Tina Cornley who's the board member of the Haitian Cultural Arts Alliance and I want to see what would be your input where do you think um, would if people wanted to educate themselves and do smart Haitian donations, would it go onto the page of Haitian Cultural Arts Alliance where we can build a page where people can click on the banner and learn about the right organizations to donate or to donate to the Haitian? Let's talk about how we can enlighten the public. Well, you know, the Miami Herald has a section that um, says and provides a list of uh, organizations that you can donate to, and we certainly can do that on our um, Haitian Cultural Arts Alliance website as well. Uh, what I wanted to point out and highlight is that there are reputable, long-standing NGOs in Haiti, like Mimi said, that they also um, have 501c3s here in the U.S. And what's interesting is that whenever there's a disaster, they're the ones that are first called. In other words, uh, someone will pick up a phone and, and they will call the director of ProDev, for instance, which is um, one of the uh, NGOs that we're associated with, and they will, they will tell them what's going on and what they need and, and so forth. And so there's already a channel of communication going because they can't pick up the phone and call the president or the United Nations, but they do call the people that they have connections with on the ground. And so there's another group which is called, um, there's St. Luke, and there's also Nos Petit Frere, which is an orphanage that also has uh, two hospitals that takes care of Haitians, Haitian poor for free. And so they're the ones that get called from the parishes of the different villages. And they'll say, well, this is our, the so in other words, there's already an infrastructure in place of who these people call when there's an emergency. And so it's, um, this is something I wanted to share because this is a behind the scenes and not many people know that this is actually happening when there is an, an emergency. And so they're actually the ones with the boots on the ground that are buying locally, that know where to go to buy so they don't get gouged and they're getting these things into these areas and they know how to do it because they, they've been there for over 30 years. So these are some of the organizations. There's another one which is um, so a seed. Uh, there's another one that's called... Uh, Ore. Ore. Ore and Franco There's Franco a number Jose. of very good organizations that um, have been doing a lot of good things that not many people hear about and that's why we wanted to highlight it here. And I think segment. it's incredible that we've all, you know, that you guys have really put this message of forward, you know, uh, smart Haitian donations. And I think that the next step is um, to tell our public uh, where to go. If you could say the website of the Haitian Cultural uh, Arts Alliance, it's uh, a, a you know, Haitian Cultural Arts Alliance dot org. Dot org. Haitian Arts Co Cultural Arts Alliance dot org. Cultural Arts Alliance dot org. So that's culturalartsalliance.org. There'll be a banner put on this website that will continue this dialogue and conversation. It will give you the list of agencies that Tina Cornley, the board member of the Haitian Cultural Arts Alliance, also what the points that Marielle Chauncey Gonzalez, who's the chairperson of the Haitian Cultural Arts Alliance, and Edward Duval Carrier, you will see this video. So we ask you to please share this video with your friends, with your family, with your co-worker, 
uh, ask your company to post it and send it out. It would mean a lot. If the word starts with one person and it continues like telephone, we could create an impact that would educate people to know how to donate, what to donate, where to donate. And these are the important questions that we need to ask ourselves. When a country is found in a disaster like this, yes, there's people on the ground, but connecting to those important agencies that are on the ground and to make sure that when you are donating, you're donating the right things and that it's going into the right hands. So at the end of the day, it could go to the people in need. Also creating programs and a dialogue where it doesn't just end a month after the disaster, but to create real, a real dialogue and a narrative that has a vision and a mission to let's empower and continue to empower Haiti way after the disaster hit and months later. This is a real continuous effort. This is how we help our neighbors, our friends. And so it's so important. Hashtag smart Haitian donations. Edouard de Valcarrier, I'd like to end with a th One thing, no more fatal assistance in Haiti. Let's be a building assistance if we're going to give any assistance to that nation. Proactive Make it proactive base. base. No so fatal. Economy base. Because there are things that, that will kill your, the economy, will not, you know, like will create major upsets you know, like in, in, in the social fabric and social structure in that country, we, be, the best thing we can do is to deal with organizations that already have boots on the ground, I mean, proven records, you understand, what they have done, what they, and these are things that people should look at carefully. People have access to all of this information through the internet. We will, you know, like try to give you a list of people that we can vouch for personally. But, you know, like, I mean, it's, it's a question of really looking and thinking before, you know, like just donating. I'm going to give my, my shoes that I've not worked for, <laughs> my high heel shoes that I've not worn for five years to a poor Haitian peasant. What is she going to do with it? Right. Do you understand? I mean, like, the people have, you know, like, I mean, uh, I mean, their heart really, is in they, the right they're, place. Their heart is in the right place. They're just not educated. They're just, yeah, let's think about what we Yeah, doing. and I agree with that, and I thank you for allowing me into your living room. And uh, uh, thank the Haitian Cultural Arts Alliance. Tina Cornley, you wanted to say one? I did. I wanted to close it with uh, something that really made me feel good when I came here to this uh, oh, is that um, so sorry. I heard from the HLC Gonzalez that there are conversations with the Haitian consul, with some Haitian uh, commissioners, and so forth of what can we do better and how we can prepare for the next disaster. So that really made me feel good to know that instead of like, you know, being, we're being more preemptive about what we can do to help uh, the local economy and to be more prepared for the future. I think that people have adopted Haiti. We love the country. We see what's happened. And it's been documented disaster after disaster. I think our hearts pour out. I think when anyone hears, and I, and I have to speak for the American public and for my family in Puerto Rico and for different uh, neighboring cities and countries, you know, Cuba sent uh, 20 doctors into Haiti. I mean, these, I think everybody, when they hear a hurricane or they hear an earthquake, we go, oh, God, may I not hit Haiti. You know, I think everybody automatically says that. Because, before them because them, I, think, I, I well. swear, because I think it's like a magnet. You know, it's a magnet. And it's the truth. And I think everybody around the world says, oh, but you're not hit Haiti. You know, because we see the images. We see how sad it is to see a country that just finally gets back on its feet. And boom, again. And it's like, oh, my God. You know, we want the telenovela to end with Haiti. <laughs> that's <laughs> and, that's, that's and that's what we want. So we ask you to please post this video, send it on, post it on your Facebook page, post it on your company Facebook page, send it to your friends, send it to your family with the hashtag, hashtag smart Haitian donations. And in uh, in that, we will be sending this, posting this video with a list of organizations. We will build something at the Haitian Cultural Arts Alliance website. Again, it's culturalartsalliance.org. And once again, hashtag smart Haitian donations. Thank you.